All right, so we're gonna go over how to do a proper pump check today. Uh, so this will be your Saturday check for the pump. Um, and it's just also a good check, like when you pick a reserve up uh, before you put it into service. This is something I've run, run the engines through. I've caught lots of problems doing that. So it's a good check to do whenever you pick up a reserve or if uh, for whatever reason you think your pump's faulty or something's not working right, this is a great check and you can kind of troubleshoot what it might be. So the target solutions assignment for this will be to perform this check, which you can just do during any Saturday check. Um, and then this will be kind of the expectation moving forward with uh, pump checks. So if you need a refresher on any of this, we've got this on our weekly checklist. Uh, we're gonna be exercising all water valves, um, checking a vacuum leak, fire commander operation, transfer valve, foam system, uh, primer operation, primer oil if needed, and then deck gun operation. Um, so that's what we'll be doing today, but basically, when you simplify that, uh, it goes into exercising the valves, checking for vacuum leaks, uh, checking the commander and the transfer valve and the foam system. So it's pretty simple. We'll walk through it here. All right, so what we're going to do here uh, is prep for a vacuum check, and then we're going to combine that with um, exercising all of our water valves. So what we're going to need to do is open up all the drains, including the pump drain. And by doing this, I'm exercising these quarter turn valves. If any of them feel sticky, I'll just give them a couple turns. I'm going to open up my pump, pump drain a couple times leave that open I'm good to go um, and then what I want to do next is every drain needs a vent in order to walk, work properly so these won't drain all the way unless we vent them so by venting them we're going to open up all the caps and we're going to get a little right here and, and all the uh, valves associated with it so as you'll see like on the intake this is draining the intake side of the pump <clears throat> so now I'm going to do this on the uh, storage connection as well This is also good just to get all the rust and debris that's stored in the pump and in the pump intake out. Um, so it's just a good, a good thing to do. So now that I've got all those open, I'm going to exercise all my water valves. I've got my tank to pump shut and my tank fill off. If I had this open, it would just keep draining out water. So now I'm going to exercise all my water valves. And I basically want to do this until they're free and they move easily. So that one feels good and I'll leave it open because I want it to drain. This one feels good. And a lot of times you'll find if it's sticky, just exercising it will, will unstick it. <clears throat> the hose reel I'm gonna leave closed for the whole operation. Great, we'll leave all that open. So once again, every drain needs a vent or it's not gonna drain properly or all the way. And we really wanna get all the water out of this. So uh, we'll open up, we've got all the valves open, all these discharges. So we'll open these up. That'll just help ensure that we get um, a complete drain on it. Because if the pump isn't completely full or completely empty of water, um, we're not gonna get a very good vacuum check. If there's any water left in it at all, um, it'll, it'll throw uh, snake eyes at us. So when I get to the officer side here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll open up all these, uh, all these uh, caps, all these drains, and I'm not gonna do that on camera, but what I will show you, there's the plumbing line that comes to the front bumper line, and it goes across here and over the wheel. So we need to drain on this side and on the other side of that in order to get it there. So on this engine is a good example. I've got a drain right here, a manual drain that's bleeding this side of it. And then as I come up over here, and what's more and more common on our newer engines is an auto drain, and that's this brass fitting right here. So what you're gonna find with that is that when it's pressurized, the drain closes, and then when there's no pressure, it opens. So as we pressurize um, the system, it closes the drain, and as pressure's taken off, it auto drains it out, so we don't need to worry about that. So all the newer engines have auto drains on both sides, and they might be at other locations where there are low-lying spots as well. All right, so now we've got our pump all put back together. We've exercised all of our um, valves. I've got everything closed. I've got all my drains closed. I've got my intake closed, my tank fill. Um, my tank to pump. The, so the pump should be airtight right now. Um, but I was a little methodical when I went around to make sure that I closed all those valves that I opened earlier. So next thing I'm gonna do is a vacuum check. So while there's air in the pump and no water, I'm gonna yank on the primer and I'm gonna watch my intake pressure decrease uh, to a lower than atmospheric pressure. Uh, once again, we're not achieving a true vacuum. So we'll see this gauge come down and um, on this engine, uh, we don't have a, a display down here in our governor that shows us um, in a digital readout, which is really nice. On the newer engines, you can see a digital readout. You can watch that pressure decrease, um, and that's a lot more accurate uh, than these old analog gauges. So when I've got that feature, I'll pay attention to that number. You know, I'll usually get down to 20, 22, sometimes 24, and that's about where it's gonna max out. So when I hit my primer on this, I'm going for a couple things. 
Uh, I'm going to hear the primer engage, and then we're going to hear the pitch of it uh, start going down. It'll kind of wow, and as it starts going lower, we're getting more and more air out of the pump. So listen uh, as we do this to the pitch of the of the primer change, and that'll that'll correspond with a lower and lower pressure um, on our intake gauge. All right, so we're going to pull the primer. Uh, pay attention to the noise the primer makes. So we're going down, which is good. It means we're getting a good negative pressure. about what we're going to get so I'm going to lay it off for a second and it looks like our pressure is holding so uh, we want to we want this negative pressure to hold for a while there's some NFPA parameters that uh, that outline exactly where it needs to hold but for the purposes of a Saturday check I'm just wanting to make sure that it holds for a while so I'll mark where this gauge is usually I'll throw a marker like I said I'll use that digital gauge and I'll go around and I'll do a couple other things I'll start the gas fan I might run the light tower on the generator for a bit come back in three four five minutes and as long as it's holding then I'm good to go so now I'm ready to bleed the pressure here, and it, uh, it gives us an opportunity for a good learning point. So um, it's a matter of what's going to cause leaks. So if I'm trying to troubleshoot a prime, um, a lot of times people look at all their valves first. There's really only like three things that are really going to affect my prime uh, that are going to be quick and immediate. And I'll show you kind of my, my, my thought process behind that. So right now you might think I'm holding a negative pressure. If I open the right rear discharge, you might think this pressure is going to go down, but it ought not. And there it didn't. Why didn't it go down? It's because of that uh, foam manifold check valve um, that's within the pump. And if that uh, is a completely new term for you, then look in the DO manual, uh, look it up and it explains it. But that's pretty much stopping that negative pressure from going past that foam manifold side of the pump. So that's true for any of these here, uh, anything on the foam manifold side. Now, if I were to open up anything on the non-foam side, I would see a decrease in that pressure. So when I'm thinking about troubleshooting a draft, uh, the really the only things that are gonna drop this immediately um, are gonna be my tank fill, uh, which is a direct line to the intake side of the pump, uh, the tank to pump, which is also the same thing, or my pump drain. So if I'm troubleshooting a draft, those are the first three things that I'm going to look at. And then after that, I'll look at my discharge, uh, my discharges that are on the non-foam side of the pump. So that's a good order of operations for troubleshooting a draft that makes more logical sense than just making sure everything's shut. That gives you a few th quick things to look at. So now I'm ready to flood my pump back with water so I can start my pump check, and I'm actually gonna uh, pull a valve that will let, let me do that. So I'm pulling my tank to pump, I hear water going into the pump, and once again, now I'm filling the pump, so I also need to allow an air place to escape. So I'll open up my tank fill, and that's allowing the pump to fill while allowing the air out the top. So uh, then again, I'll, I might go around and do a couple things, let the pump refill uh, with the water, uh, and then I'll engage the pump and I'll start with our uh, governor check. So now I'm going to check the governor, uh, and I've got two modes on that. Uh, I've got RPM and pressure, right? Uh, RPM for relay and pressure for people. So let's say I'm simulating a line right now and I'm wanting to check my governor. I'm going to go ahead and go to pressure mode. <clears throat> I've got pressure on my uh, discharge gauge. So now I'm going to bring up my pressure to, you know, 100, 150 PSI. at 150 psi and now we're going to check our governor so right now if i flow water i should see my engine rpms increase so how do i flow water i can simulate uh flowing a line by opening up the tank fill so i'm going to open the tank fill and i should see my engine rpm go up because i'm starting to need more and my flow is increased so i need more pressure so we're at 1440 1450 1500 so i know i'm working as it compensates that direction so i'm going to close it and i'm back down where i started now here's something really important with a lot of our engines when i go down to idle here it kicks me out well this engine didn't uh this is r28 i'm still in pressure mode most engines when you hold the idle button down it kicks you to no mode and you have to re-engage back to pressure mode so whenever i hit the idle button my finger just automatically goes to mode because i know that's the next thing that's going to happen on most engines so now i'm going to check um, rpm mode and just make sure that's functioning properly so i've made sure that my governor's working in pressure mode so i'm going to switch to rpm we're telling the governor that we want to lock into rpm mode right so i shouldn't see any rpm increase so this time, just for so it's not so loud out here, I'm going to go to 100 PSI. 
And it doesn't really matter what pressure you set, just as long as it's constant, you're noticing the changes that you want to see. So now we're at 100 PSI. My RPMs are locked into 1095. So as I simulate flowing a line and open up my tank fill, I should really see those RPMs staying about the same. But I should see my pressure go down. So my pressure is now down to 95. As I open it more, we've gone down to 95. My RPM has stayed about the same. So once again, I'll bring it to idle. And on most engines, I'm just going to go straight to mode and put it back in the mode I need to be in. So now I've checked my governor. I've checked for vacuum leaks. Um, I've, I know my throttle's working well. I know my display's working well. So now I'm going to check my transfer valve. Now most of our engines at idle in volume will be about 50 PSI. Some of our older ALFs are down around 40. So I should expect this number to double as I go from volume to pressure. So our pressure light is out as they commonly are on these, uh, on these displays. So I'm watching, for, I'm watching and listening for two things. As I engage the pressure uh, valve and I get to the pressure side, I should see this increase, now telling me that I've, I should see it double going from volume to pressure. So that's one way that I know. And the other way is if the light illuminates and if there's no light on most engines, you'll hear a clicking and that signifies that you've hit the stop at the end of the valve. Uh, the valve is thrown as, as, as far as it can. So um, we'll listen for that. And I don't want to keep ratcheting on that too much, but I can use that as an indicator. So as I switch from volume to pressure, I'll see my pressure increase from about 40 to about 80. I hear the clicking, so I know that it's stopped. So now when I come back down to volume, I should see a decrease. Now that's showing us that we went from volume stage to pressure stage on the pump. All right, the last thing we're going to do is check our foam system operation, um, which is really quite simple. Uh, we're going to pull our booster line out, we're going to flow water, and we shouldn't have any foam in the line because we want to store these without any foam in it. So we shouldn't see any, uh, any foam in the line as we're flowing water. I'll go to my foam uh, pro, I'll press on. Uh, the light will start blinking, indicating that I'm, that I'm flowing foam. Um, and then I'll flow until I've got foam production, and then I'll turn the foam pro off, and I'll flow until I purge the line. So just reviewing what we've done on our pump check here, uh, we've exercised and opened all of our drains valves, um, and that has cleared out the, the pump. We know our, our, our valves are working properly. We did our vacuum leak check. Our fire commander is functioning properly. We checked it in RPM and in pressure mode. Our transfer valve is functioning properly. We saw that go from volume to uh, pressure stage easily. We checked our foam system. We know our primer is running uh, correctly. Uh, the primer oil, we'll need to go around and make sure that's topped off. And then the last thing is our deck gun operation. All we're doing is if we have the, the manual deck gun, uh, we'll get up there and manipulate it, make sure that it's working correctly, uh, which I would suggest being fresh on because there's a couple uh, pins in there that are, that are hard to find and pull to make it go up and down. So be sure you're good on that. And then if it's an electronic uh, like this one is, then I would just manipulate the uh, electronic controls and make sure it's functioning within its parameters. So that's uh, kind of what we're looking for in a Saturday check. Uh, this is a good exercise when you pick up. Um, a new engine uh, as a reserve or if you're you know picking something up from the mechanic um, or just your Saturday check or if you're just you know this pumps throwing snake eyes at you and you just kind of trying to figure out troubleshoot uh, what component might not be working right.